Hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and we are counting the Omar tonight, and I want to thank you for taking time to do that with me. The Omar, the counting of the Omar, that is what we're doing right now. We are in the period of counting the Omar, which is a time period between Passover or Pesach, all the way to Shavuot, or we call Pentecost. It's a 49 or 50 day period where we're counting the Omar, which an Omar is just a measurement, a measurement of grain. And during Passover at the, at the first fruits, we take an Omar of barley and we give it to the priest and he waves it before the Lord as a thank offering. Now we're counting all the way to the wheat harvest, which again, they take Omars and they present it before the Lord. We're in a time period to prepare our hearts before the Lord. So it's the time period of the Omar, a time of us just taking our hearts and opening, opening them wide up before the Lord and telling the Lord, Hey God, I don't want anything to separate me from you. Hey God, I want to know your ways. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your heart. Hey God, I want to walk in a way that's pleasing to you. Hey God, I know it's not about me. It's all about you. So I'm drawing close to you. I'm drawing close to your goodness, your grace, and your righteousness, and I'm believing in you. I'm wanting more, more, more. And we do that, that we should do that all the time. But during this time period, this special time period where a lot of people are coming together and they're counting the Omar, just setting themselves apart every day to acknowledge their great need for God, to prepare their hearts to receive the law of the Lord, which was given during that time period, during Sheva Oats, where Moses went up into the mountain and he received the law from the Lord. And it's a time period where we are empowered again. The Bible says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, that's a time when the Lord told, told his disciples to go and wait to tarry until they receive the promise from the Father and you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. It's the empowering to take that word and take it to the world. So we are going to read Psalm 67 and we're doing it in the Amplified Bible tonight. And it's to the chief musician on stringed instruments, a song, a psalm, and it goes like this. God be merciful and gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us and among us. Selah, pause and calmly think of that that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power, your deliverances, and your salvation among all the nations. Let the people praise you, turn away from their idols, and give thanks to you, O God. Let all the people praise and give thanks to you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the people fairly and guide, lead, or drive the nations upon the earth. Selah, pause and calmly think of that. Let the people praise you, turn away from idols, and give thanks to you, O Lord. Let all the people praise you and give thanks to you. The earth has yielded its harvest and evidence of God's approval. God, even our own God, will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall reverently fear him. Amen. So we are counting the Omar, and tonight the blessing for the Jewish people is traditionally, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and, counted, com and commanded us to count the Omar. To the Gentile believers in Yeshua, you may want to say, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and commanded your people to count the Omar. And today is the 37th day, which is five weeks and two days of counting the Omar. And this week we are talking about intimacy with the Lord. And let me say this, that everything that we do, God wants it to come out of intimacy. Remember the church of Ephesus, and they did all these amazing things, and God's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Revelations, but the Bible says, he said, the Lord said to Ephesus, he says, 
I have one thing against you, and that is this, that you've left your first love. What does God want? Well, he wants your love. He wants to be intimate with you. Intimacy, to be close. Intimacy, to hear his heart. Intimacy. God wants a people that know him, that love him, that want to be close to him, that want to hear his heart. We, we talked about it yesterday, that the children of Israel knew his acts, but Moses knew his ways. And one of the things about Moses is that he was a friend of God. I love in Exodus 33, 9 through 11, I, I love this, that, that whole section where he asked, he says, if I found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, that I might find favor in your sight. You know, it's like he was just in love. And then, he's, then he goes, I want to see your glory. If I found favor in your sight, let me see your glory. But listen to this part. Whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand in the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. Then all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent. And all the people would arise and worship each at the entrance of his tent. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses. Listen to this. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to his camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. And I love this too, because God is speaking to Moses face to face like a friend, intimacy, and who's on the... Who is on the outskirts of the tent while well, Joshua, he is falling in love with God. <laughs> it makes me cry. And he's going to be the next leader. He won't leave the tent. He has fallen in love with the presence of God. So <laughs> I love that there's something about intimacy that allows you to stand when other, others fall. Because you know you're God. You know that he's good. You know he's for you. Listen to friend. I looked up this word. It says in the Hebrew, it's brother, companion, fellow, friend, husband, lover, neighbor, another, neighbor, friend, fellow, companion. It's a um, friend, intimate, fellow, citizen. And then it crosses over to this. It's to tend a flock, to pasture it, to graze figuratively or literally, generally to rule by extension, to associate with as a friend, to have companionship, keep company with. So use as a friend, make friendship with herdsman, shepherd, pastor, shearing house, shepherd, wander, waste, anyway, that keeps on, then it goes to this companion, sheep, friend, Israel as a flock, shepherd, to be companions, to be a special friend. And we know this, Psalms 23, 1, and I love this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, if that word shepherd is the words that we just talked about, the Lord is my friend. In the Passion Bible, they, they say it, David's poetic praise to God. It says, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. Is God your best friend? Is he your everything? I'll tell you what I told the Lord. I said, I want to be one that is your friend. I love Song of Solomon where it says, this is my beloved and this is my friend. When she's talking about him, it says, this is my beloved. You know what? She's not just married to him or she's just not just attracted to him that way, you know, but what? He's her friend. She can share her heart with him. He shares his heart with her. You know, there's something about a shepherd if you ever studied shepherds, I had this book on Psalms 23 through a shepherd's eyes. And it just talks about the intimacy that a shepherd has with his sheep, how he watches over his sheep, how he has to make sure they have certain things to protect the sheep. He'll do whatever he can for the sheep. What the sheep are the shepherd's friend. So I want to read this, John 15, 12 through 15. And this is Jesus talking. He's talking to his disciples and he's getting ready to die. And really, he's getting ready to suffer and die. They're right there. This is during the Last Supper and he's talking to them. And what does he say to them? He's telling them, he says, teaching them. And this is, he says, this is my commandment that you love one another 
just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. And he's telling them this because you know what? He's getting ready to lay his life down for us, for us. What? God Almighty didn't just die on the cross to save our souls from hell, but he died on the cross to have a people for his own possession, a people that would love him, a people that he could be intimate with. He wants friends. This is my beloved. This is my friend. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Did you hear that? As friends, we just don't go our own way. We do what our shepherd tells us to do. We follow him. We honor him. We obey him. Even Moses in the wilderness as we're, as we're walking through that time period, counting the Omar. You know what? He listened to the voice of the Lord. He obeyed him. And, and when that one time when he disobeyed the Lord, and he didn't honor the Lord. I mean, he, he didn't get to go into the promised land when instead of speaking to the rock, he struck it because he was angry. No, God wants a people that what? He, we hear his voice and we obey. It, God wants to be intimate with us. He says that he is the, our shepherd. And John, the 10th chapter, it says this, that his sheep, he said, He's the shepherd of the sheep. And he says his sheep hear his voice. What we're intimate with him. We hear his voice and a voice of another will not follow. We are intimate. We know his voice. I've known people before that are friends that they start acting the same way as their friends. They hang around so much that they talk like each other and they laugh like each other and they think like each other. They're just, they're friends they begin to take on their characteristics. God wants friends. I told you yesterday, or was it, no, I told you that one of the times when we're counting the Omar, that one of my favorite scriptures is, we all with unveiled faces beholding as a mirror, the glory of the Lord were being changed into the same image from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Come on. It's by his spirit. What we're being changed. So it, that's in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter at the very end. What We're being changed by what? Beholding him, by being intimate with him. I'm going to leave you with just a few scriptures. I love this. Proverbs 3, 32 in the Passion. Every violent thug is despised by the Lord, but every tender lover finds friendship with God. He will hear his intimate secrets. One more time. Listen to this one. There's a private place reserved for lovers of God, Psalms 25, 14, where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promise. It says, the secret of the Lord is for those who fear him and he will make them know his covenant. What? Those that are intimate with him, he reveals himself to. Now let's be intimate with God. Let's be his friends. This is what my beloved and this is my friend. God bless you. You are so loved by God. He loves you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.